Hello everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Um, so um, it's been quite a some time that I made some videos. Um, there are a lot of happening in my uh, professional and personal life. So I couldn't spend some time to create these videos. But yeah, recently I have updated my LinkedIn um, that I have transitioned from lead estate to principal developer. Um, I've been receiving a lot of messages, um, uh, both congratulatory messages and some questions regarding how uh, you know they could also do the transition so um, instead of answering everyone individually I thought okay I'll record a video um, and then and then upload so people could refer this All right so so um, I'm gonna tell what worked for me I'm not gonna say this is exactly what you need to do but this is how I approach and and how I transition right so um, so yeah so if you are a manual tester um, basically, you have to start doing some automation. Um, there is literally um, very less chance that you could directly move from manual uh, testing to to um, developer. You can do that, but it's much easier if you start with automation, uh, pick up some programming, then migrate to uh, transition to a developer. Right. So I assume you would be at this stage, right? So automate. You, you'll be automating your end-to-end -end API test or UA test. This is what you might be doing, right? So at this point of time. Um, so the second thing that you wanted to do is get strong with programming. Again, you don't have to learn all the programming languages. Um, see in your current company what your developers were using to build front-end and back-end. Let's say they, they may use TypeScript for both front-end and back-end. In my case, it's the case. Um, in some cases, they may use .NET, Java, Python for for, for backend, and JavaScript for front end. In those cases, learn those programming languages, understand the intricacies. Um, you should be in a position to basically understand the code, uh, the, what they have written. Um, the the third task is you could you could subscribe yourself to to the new PRs, so you could you don't have to review and give your comments but it's better to silently observe how good developers were, were basically coding, right? So you need to know what's the ticket, how they approach solving this problem, and what's the new code. And you could shadow code. Uh, let's say, imagine that you would be given this task, how would you have coded, right? Uh, there are very less chances that you could succeed in, in the first attempt, but you could just give a try. Um, now with the help of AI, agentic tools, uh, it should be it should be fine, right? All you need to know is um, uh, some basics about how how front end or back end works. And then the next stage is is how you should add, you should know how to add user centric locators to UI code, right? So in front end, um, you might be using XPath, CSS, um, which might cause your test to fail. So in those cases how you could add user-centric locators like placeholders, um, area labels, um, and, uh, you know, uh, stuff like that. Um, so, so, so you could add those locators to the UI code. This is your first step, first contribution to your um, development repository. Again, this will also help you to understand that adding these locators will help uh, fixing the 508 issues. But again, you could also fi start fi fixing smaller issues like uh, CSS, uh, typo issues, the defects that you find. You could, instead of creating a defect, you could create a PR to fix those defects, right? So that could be a best way, again, to contribute to development repositories. Again, in these stages, right, in the stage four and five, you should be able to basically uh, clone the development repository, understand how local, how to set this local front-end server, how to test your changes locally. They may be uh, proxying your local front end to, uh, you know, uh, a, a specific environment backend. So, so they may point your local front end to dev backend, right? So they could do all that. You could understand all the intricacies. Uh, most companies are, uh, you know, will have a readme on how to do the setup, how to start your local front end server, how to test your changes. So you should be in a position to do all these um, four and five. And uh, normally the 508 issues are something that developers won't touch um, or, you know, in most cases they don't touch. So so what you could do is um, run a 
run a 508 scan um, using there are several tools available in the market you could use screen readers um, you could use wave plugins from chrome uh, you could you could or you could use playwright to uh, to run the 508 scans um, find out all the list of issues and try to fix them with help of uh, you know AI tools you uh, so for example if there is a keyboard interaction any element that should be keyboard interactable right most probably they would have only um, created code for on click right uh, what about the keyboard event so you could add those small things right so uh, let's say if it is not properly described by the screen reader then go ahead and add area label so you have to do some research what are the 508 issues and how typically you have to solve them and it's going to be the same for all the ui elements one once you find the theme uh, how to fix these uh, these kind of 508 issues if it is a color contrast ratio you have to go and find the css file and update um, the the css so um, so it, it doesn't show up in the color contrast ratio so once you get the theme you could you could use a to just bulk fix all of them um, yeah so that's how you do it right so this is some issue that nobody will touch but it has huge impact on the business so start doing it um and then you could take small tickets like bug fixes uh maybe a bug created by another tester or developer you or a small improvement ticket um, um so you could take those tickets you can say hey in grooming like you know i could volunteer you know i i wanted to try fixing this right and and then uh and then you could also start to improve your local development experience let's say um your local development testing is, isn't really great some functionalities do not work locally and then you could see how you could proxy those requests to uh, a specific environment backend you could do all of this right you know the api calls what are the api calls how to proxy the requests there may be some initial setup there but you could extend them to to support or improve your local development experience um, again my experience uh, as a devx engineer for some time in clipboard health helped me to improve on all these things if you cannot do this that's okay but uh, you know you can try doing this um, and then importantly you can migrate your end-to-end -end test that sits in a separate repository runs on a specific environment like dev qa qa int. you could um, shift those tests to the left which means make those tests run on your local front-end server so you could either run it on commits or you could run it on prs right that's the best way how you could leverage end-to-end -end tests again guys do not create 400 500 2000 end-to-end -end tests and if you are doing that i cannot comment much but please follow test premade or testing trophy um, and then have very minimal uh, valuable end-to-end -end tests that runs on prs that's the only way you could get benefit out of your end-to-end -end tests um, if your team have mock heavy unit tests um, that uh, that test the implementation rather than the user behavior you could migrate them to integration tests uh, you could use a react testing library with vtest in case of front end or you could also use playwright uh, and then create them as a component as playwright supports uh, react view and svelte applications uh, for component testing so you could mount the component individually uh, pass the props uh, react props um, and then test them whether this is there or not. Um, that is one way of doing it. Again, if you are concentrating on your backend, you could also migrate them, uh, migrate the unit tests uh, from unit test to um, integration test. You could run your, you could hit up. So, so normally backend tests will be mock heavy. So what you could do is they might be mocking their databases. But instead of that, what you could do is you could spin up your docker containers for for your databases let's say you use postgres spin up a postgres uh, docker container with a similar schema as your original db schema and uh, and hit the api uh, uh, you know against that particular database and get uh, the data you know you could you could set up it right you could set up um, a docker container with some initial data or you could use api to dump some data or you could have an sql script to push some data there so you could do some setup and then in the test you could hit an api call get the response actual response and validate it if you do that you don't even have to write end-to-end -end api test that's a lot of efforts change 
again you could run these integration tests on prs and this is a this is a dummy database right docker containers or you could also use test containers again if if you could do that um, you don't end up creating a lot of test data in your real databases uh, once the test run is over you could just throw away the docker container um, and then for the next test you could create a new container that way um, you have a very efficient setup you don't load up your uh, local environment you don't have to worry about test data management and all that stuff right most times we have to clean up all the test data that we created in those environments it is all not needed if you follow these right approaches and last uh, like you can pick smaller development tickets and again the goal is to become an unified engineer i'm not saying if i do development i'm not doing testing and i'm throwing it to another guy's plate i'm not doing that the main advantage of but as jet transitioning to development is is bring his valuable testing knowledge how he could test so pick smaller development tickets test it yourself develop test and ship it to production yourself uh, behind a feature flag that's how ideally you want to ship your features right so um again you could also pick high impactful development tickets let's say there is a serious business impact and you want to take ownership of it once you get good confidence about uh, your development skills be it front end or back end um uh, you know once you get confident you could you know take bigger impactful tickets and then you can try to solve your engineering and business problems with the help of your development skills it can be anything it can be you know solving your cacd practices um you know your you you let's say you follow a poor approach you follow a good plan strategy you want to migrate them to uh, trunk based development um you want to uh, use launch darkly you want to use uh, you know a new cacd tool you want to improvise the way how you create monitors dashboards um how you solve bigger problems and all that right so um you could do all these things as the next stage um again to to give you an example right what i mean here is um we had a case where um we were um we have to migrate lot there are almost 70 80 business rules in our application that spread across different microservices and when somebody have to touch any existing uh, rule um it will impact the entire business because they do not know if it has a regression on any other rule so so the idea was to move all these tools into a new microservice called rules engine and put all those rules there again if you want to do that without impacting the business with very less resources how it is it possible a typical approach a typical company like cognizant or you know whatever like what they would do is they do the they do convert all the create the new rules put it there and then they try to do a complete regression with like 15 to 20 testers you know do all that stuff right that's typically how you do things right so but let's say if you work for a startup you think from first principles and um, what you could do is so they created feature flag so so there are two two routes one is a which is the old rules which will go through the old rules route and the b is the new rules route now what happens we put um, we made the code to execute in the both the ways the, the old rule and the new rule but we will take the result from the old rule for a few few months so and then we logged the discrepancy between the old rule evaluation and the new rule evaluation into data log so now after 15 days we we got bunch of discrepancies we we went and analyzed the logs and found out what are the rules that having issues and we fix them case by case and then we again released it so we did this shadow mode for a month and then we fixed issues one by one until until we find no more discrepancies once we are confident there are no more discrepancies for 3 to 4 days um we just switch the route to new rule and then and then after 10 days when there are no more discrepancies we are happy with the new rule migration so we just removed all the code from the uh, old rule um and the and the feature flags so this way we did a very complex migration 
it's just one or two developers uh, you know with the help of some monitoring tools some really good approach right so this is how we need to think lean solve business and uh, engineering problems um so yeah this is this is the next step right so so once you so th this is the stage when you realize you know you could you could be a developer um uh, again if you want to you, you you can uh, if you can do until 12 you are a good developer you could you could solve um you were your task assigned to you you are in a good shape but then if you want to be a principal and developer you want to solve um bigger engineering and business problems for your teams and business right again um i i learned some basics of uh, front end development uh, with with uh, programming with Moj YouTube, um, just to see how how front end basically works, how to spin up it, you know some basic CSS HTML knowledge and all that. Um, but uh, but apart from that, I already know Spring Boot. When I did some API automation, I learned Spring Boot. So back end development, uh, then I you know since I know Spring Boot, I could easily grasp Express and NestJS. It's just a different programming language, but basically the entire concept is same um and uh, so back end that's how i learned it but the important skill that i learned is is doing tdd is is you you practice tdd um and uh, how you could drive your cloud code or qcli um to to produce the output that you wanted with with some context and prompts um so yeah so try to use AI in your work try to ask a lot of questions so most of the knowledge that i get is, is i chat to these uh, uh you know tools these agentic tools uh, i ask them a lot of question uh, why isn't this way why is this way what is the right way why you think this is right so i keep questioning it and i get my uh, answers clarified again uh, five years back uh, I, I find it very hard to learn new skills, but with these tools now, it's it's becoming much easier to learn new skills, try out new stuff. All you have to do is uh, test your own code and ship it, right? Confidence. Uh, if you, as long as you can test, which is which is what we are good at, um, you know, we could develop any code, we could test it with confidence, and then we can ship it. Um, uh, yeah. So again, you can learn more on the AI tools, how you could use MCPs. Uh, let's say if you're doing front-end development, you could use Playwright MCP to, to launch your local host. Uh, that's your front-end server and test the changes that you made. If you are doing back-end development, you could use SQL, uh, you know, MCPs to read data, to, to see what's what's there and all that stuff, right? So if you are using front-end development, you could use Figma MCP to, to basically mimic or check your um, local front-end server is behaving uh, like the Figma design. You could just copy the Figma design and then say, create a CSS like this, right? Fix my CSS based on these values. So, so it, it, it knows all the font styles and, and font and everything. So it becomes much easier these days to learn development, but it's all about your, uh, uh, you know, willpower to learn it to practice it to have patience around uh, hey i cannot do it i'm not built for it I, there are stages that you know it can be like that but you know keep keep practicing it we are never testers we, we became testers like after a certain point of time so um so you could you could just keep practicing these development start with small tickets keep practicing it um find a mentor if you could uh that's that's gonna help you a lot um yeah, um, that's that's how I I transition from an asset to an, a principal developer. Uh, please let me know if you have still more questions. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I, and once you transition to a developer, just don't forget to drop your comments in this YouTube section. I'll be happy to see that. Uh, thank you. You all have a good day.